Hi everyone, today is 29th of January and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. Guys, today we are a little bit late with respect to newspaper analysis. Reason was that I was traveling yesterday. I came late and then since morning I had my classes. So now after the class, I am right away making this particular video. So apologies for that. In today's session, we are going to discuss all the important articles which are there in the Hindu newspaper. But apart from Hindu, articles from PIB and other newspapers also we are going to cover. And in the today's session, I am going to take up these articles for mains examination, these articles for prelims examination and for mapping. We are today going to cover Uganda. Today, we are going to cover Uganda because recently NAM, fine non-aligned movement, NAM's 19th summit has been held in Uganda. Okay. Now, if I give you overview about the articles, first article for mains with, is with respect to China-Africa ties for GS paper number 2 IR. Then, Aadhaar based payment system and MG Narega issue, GS paper number 2, developmental issues and social justice we are going to cover. Then state guarantees for GS3 economy we are going to cover. And then challenges for 2024, it is a kind of an overview article for both GS2 and GS3. And for prelims, uh, Shinchung, Bugun, Village Community Reserve, Tassar Silk, Armado and PM Yashashvi. These are the articles that we are going to cover. Apart from that, current affairs based MCQ questions would also be taken up. So, before starting these articles, first of all, let's take MCQ questions answer that we discussed in previous session and MCQ questions for the today. So, first, let's take that. Now, uh, so first of all, guys, this was the question that we took on 26th of uh, January. Consider following options with respect to leprosy. Consider the following options with respect to leprosy. Okay, now we have a uh, statement one, it is a chronic infectious disease caused by virus. So, is it right? No, it is not right. Why? Because it is caused by bacteria. It is also known as Hansen disease. It is right. The integrated portal Nikusht 2.0 is related to leprosy. Yes, it is also right. So, right answer is a 2 and 3 and congratulations to all of you who has given the right answer. Then further moving on to next question. So, this was a question that we took. Why has Odisha state government sought Kunki elephant from Tamil Nadu? We have discussed it already. So, why they have been requested to address man-elephant conflict? So, right answer is B. And then third question that we took. Which of the following international organization primarily deals with issues related to international criminal justice, settling legal disputes between state, advisory opinion? Okay, so which body? Right answer is International Court of Justice, that is a C, International Court of Justice. We have seen that recently South Africa has filed a case against Israel and this is why this article came in news and question on this. Now, let's take MCU questions for today and I will request that please leave your right answers in comment box and please do participate in it every day. So, consider the following statement with respect to Reunion Island. It is an overseas territory of Britain. It is located in the east of Maldives, which is a right statement on that basis. Please give your right answer. Recently, we have seen that it was in news. Then, which of following sites have been designated as a Ramsar site? Please identify right option and leave, in, leave the right answer in comment box. Consider following statement with regard to script. So, recently, we have seen that there was a question on this line also. Brahmi script has been used in India to write Sanskrit. In ancient India, Garan script was employed in Jammu and Kashmir to write Sanskrit originating from the Dogra script. So, which is the right option? Okay. So, these are questions for today. Please attempt them and leave your answer in the comment box. And now, let's start with analysis of our articles. So, every class guys, we start with a GS quotation. And idea of this particular quotation is to give you certain substance so that you can complement it with your GS answers as well as you can write it in your essay. So, today we are going to take quotation from Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein says, I believe that virtually all the problems in world come from inequality of one kind or another. So, inequalities could be social inequality, it could be political inequality, it could be economic inequality. And these inequalities, in a way, they tamper with justice in the society. And as they tamper with justice, injustice that is developed, these injustices leads to all sorts of problem. So, if we need to bring justice in the society, then inequality has to be tamed. And as we talk about inequality, according to Oxfam, profiting from pain report, 
according to Oxfam, profiting from pain report, it has been said that now it will take 136 years to bring gender parity, okay, which is one of a type of an inequality and in same way many such inequalities exist in the society. So, that is about it and uh, you can use this quotation in GS4 ethics essay as well as in GS paper number 2 developmental issues. Now, let's take the first article for today and uh, guys, uh, I would also like to tell you that our Roundup 2024, which is a dedicated batch for upcoming prelims, fine, we are launching it within next two days on 31st, batch is getting launched. This particular batch is one-stop solution for current affairs for upcoming prelims examination. In this particular batch, we are going to cover entire current affairs of last one year in theme-based manner, such as economy, environment, art and culture, polity, international organizations. And this particular in this particular batch, we are going to cover the sources of Hindu, Indian Express, down to earth. And here, crisp notes will be provided. Also, after discussing few questions, we are going to discuss MCQ based on the question so that you develop a better understanding and it helps in better consolidation. Now, you can enroll in the batch uh, by clicking on the link that is provided in the comment box. Also, you can visit our website and you can enroll in the batch. So, the batch is going to start from 31st of January. Also, these classes will be live, but if you miss the classes, you can attend the recording classes also. They will be available for one year validity. Okay. Analyzing China's ties with Africa. Analyzing China's ties with Africa. So, basically guys, recently one important development has happened. And what is this development? First of all, let's understand that and then we'll see implication of this particular development. So, recently, Chinese Foreign Minister, Chinese Foreign Minister, Mr. Wang Yi has visited Africa and this is his 11th annual trip to Africa. Now understand this particular thing guys, that post 2000, Africa-China relation has prospered to a considerable, uh, they have prospered considerably. In this particular capacity, we find this particular thing that first of all, you need to understand little bit of background. That what are the reasons, what are the reasons behind China's interest in Africa? What are the reasons behind China's interest in Africa? Now guys, first of all, we find this particular thing that China, in order to sustain itself as a factory to the world, in order to sustain itself as a factory to the world, China needs African market. China needs African market. Now you understand this particular thing that what has happened over the past few years, particularly after the arrival of Donald Trump, decoupling and de-risking movement has got started. As a part of this decoupling, what the countries want to do? They want to decouple from China. They want to de-risk from China. It has impacted China's economic growth in a negative way. So China wants a new market apart from West and therefore they are looking forward for Africa so that the China can economically sustain. Also guys, we find this particular thing that when we talk about Africa, Africa also holds an important geopolitical value. It holds also it holds an important geopolitical value. We know this particular thing that 50 plus countries of Africa, as they are the member of UNGA, they hold a considerable voice in UNGA. And if they are supportive of China, what they can do? They can swing resolutions in the UNGA which are being raised against the China. So this is something very important for geopolitical economic reasons that China needs Africa and therefore China-Africa relations are prospering and we find that, uh, we find this particular thing that the Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs have now visited to Africa. Now, which countries he have visited? So he has visited Egypt, Tunisia, Togo and Ivory Coast. Egypt, Tunisia, Togo and Ivory Coast. Now, why this particular meet has happened? This particular meet has happened to implement an earlier agreement that was signed between India and African nation. So actually what happened? China-Africa leaders dialogue was held in Johannesburg in 2023. And as part of this China-Africa leaders dialogue, there were three priority areas that were identified. Now these three priority areas were industrialization in Africa, agricultural modernization in Africa and cooperation on talent development. Now guys, often we find this thing that Africa is called as a dark continent. Why dark continent? A, because of the racial color of the people and secondly, it is still seen that education, skill development, 
वोकेशनल डेवलपमेंट हैज नॉट हैपेंड इन अफ्रीका सो अफ्रीका से डेमोग्राफी इज टू बी डेवलप्ड एंड इन दिस कैपेसिटी चाइना इज गोइंग टू हेल्प सो लेट्स अगेन सी थ्री कॉपरेशन एरियाज इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन एग्रीकल्चर मॉडर्नाइजेशन एंड कॉपरेशन ऑन टैलेंट डेवलपमेंट ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट नाउ ऑल्सो गाइज इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर चाइना अफ्रीका कॉपरेशन चाइना अफ्रीका कॉपरेशन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी एग्रीड एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर मीटिंग इज अ ग्राउंड लेइंग एक्टिविटी हेयर इट विल बी डिसाइडेड दैट वट फर्दर थीम्स आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस्ड इन दिस चाइना अफ्रीका कॉपरेशन मीट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सो दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर मीट now when we talk about china africa relations so we find this particular thing that the china africa relations they started developing after 1950s now during 1950s many of african countries were fighting to get their independence anti colonialism was going on during that particular time africa uh, china supported african countries demand of independence and since then their relations got started then post 1970 uh, around 1970s what happened it was because of the african support that was given to china that china got a permanent seat okay fine so a permanent seat into the united nations security council and post that economic relations between the africa and china got started now guys we find this particular thing that in 2000 forum of china africa cooperation got started in 2000 forum for china africa cooperation got started and in 2013 belt and road initiative was brought by china and in this belt and road initiative many african countries okay to be very precise 52 african countries have signed the belt and road initiative now under belt and road initiative china is going to develop infrastructure across africa this infrastructure will include roll, railways ports roads etc and for that developmental loan developmental assistance will be given to africa now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about africa and west and africa and china there is a relation between this uh, there is a difference between the relations understand this thing historically west has provided a lot of developmental aids to africa but west often impose conditionalities these conditionalities can be political can be economical can be social that if you do this will give you money if you do this will give you money but china is different china gives the money but does not interferes in their internal matters and therefore now african countries are moving towards china because of their no strings attached approach and because of this particular thing trillions of dollars have been given by china since 2013 to africa now this thing has become a concern also because it is being said that it is a part of a debt trap diplomacy of china as a part of that debt trap diplomacy china deliberately gives unsustainable unviable loans and when countries are not able to pay back the money china acquires their strategic asset for example hamban tota sri lanka what happened in sri lanka when sri lanka was not able to give back the money hamban tota port was taken on 99 year of lease so this is being a concern that africa is falling for the debt trap diplomacy but anyhow they need money and china is deliberately uh, is ready to give them now when we talk about china's objectives in africa so in the objectives first of all i have discussed some major objectives but apart from that other objectives are also there and please use these particular data as here now first of all when we talk about africa africa is the continent of invaluable mineral resources today we find this particular thing 90% of world's cobalt platinum and 75% of the coltan which is important for electronics and which is also important for the new age technologies they are they are produced by africa and today when we talk about the china china needs these critical minerals for their fourth industrial revolution and china also has developed the largest refineries in africa for rare earth metals rare earth metals are the backbone of the modern industries semiconductors automobiles electronics new age automobiles electronics and biggest refinery china maintains in africa so therefore china needs africa then next thing that comes here is that china also needs africa why because i told you already that in unga africa is the largest block and if you have support of africa resolutions could be swinged today guys we see this thing that countries such as the philippines they are becoming more vocal against china why because of the south china dispute so if any resolution is brought in the china china will need the support of africa then also why china needs africa it is because they want to strengthen their currency that is renminbi or chinese yuan now see this particular thing 
टूडे चाइना वॉन्ट्स टू सो यू माइट हैव हर्ड अ वर्ड इफ नॉट देर इज अ डी डोलराइजेशन दैट इज गोइंग ऑन वॉट इज अ डी डोलराइजेशन डी डोलराइजेशन इज डेलिबरेट अटेम्प्ट टू डिसप्लेस यू एस डॉलर एज अ इंटरनेशनल करेंसी एंड इन दिस डी डोलराइजेशन चाइना इज ऑल्सो एट द फ्रंट एंड चाइना वॉन्ट्स दैट डॉलर शुड बी रिप्लेस बाय द चाइनीज यू आन बट यू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन दैट वाई अ करेंसी विल बी यूज एट द इंटरनेशनल लेवल इट विल ओनली बी यूज वेन द कंट्रीज आर रेडी टू पे एंड रेडी टू रिसीव मनी इन दैट Africa is a block of 50 plus countries. Now China wants that they should trade in Chinese renminbi, and therefore they want Africa's support. Now, when we talk about the China, China has provided the Panda bonds to Africa. What is Panda bonds? Under the Panda bonds, China gives money to Africa at lower interest rate in yuan, in yuan, not in dollar, in yuan. So by that they are trying to increase acceptance of China's yuan. Then next is. commercial opportunities so because of decoupling china wants new market apart from west and usa and africa happens to be a very big market also guys also guys when we talk about africa china relation it is often publicized as a win win relation that africa is getting money technology and china is getting market but at the same time also there is one added advantage that china does not interferes into the political matters does not interface in the domestic matters so because of this non interventionist approach africa is finding china is more suitable partner and therefore this relation is prospering now here guys when we talk about india india should play a very important role now though india's angle is not provided in the article but you think yourself when we talk about india and africa they have uh, they have long traditional ties historical ties cultural ties that are there and also guys when we talk about india india has never focused on the scramble of africa as china is looking china is specifically focused on the aspect that they want mineral from there they want to use it as a market but india always promotes the capacity building of africa now indian diplomacy should up their guard and should focus more in africa and here india africa dialogue should be an important platform so that is about it and now moving to next article aadhar based pay a bad idea for mg narega now this article will discuss with respect to gs paper number 2 social justice okay now let's discuss the article so basically guys recently what has happened one development has happened and what is this particular development recently rural development rural development ministry has provided that all settlements of mg narega will be done through abps system now before discussing that let's discuss some basic background information now when we talk about mg narega mg narega stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act and under this particular act 100 days of paid employment is to be provided to a to rural household 100 days of paid employment is to be provided to rural household now this employment will be provided for unskilled work it is a demand driven scheme means anybody who comes and ask for work work has to be given the scheme is open scheme means it is not specifically for sc st or obc it is for everyone okay now when mg narega is concerned so recently it has been said that all the money that will be given will be given through abps now understand this particular thing when we talk about the payments under mg narega it was given through two ways number 1 it was given through account transfer now what happens in account transfer by ifsc code by the person's bank account money was transferred as usually we do second is aadhar based payment system now what is aadhar based payment system so guys in aadhar based payment system there are certain steps that will be there number 1 what will happen let's understand these okay step number 1 step number 1 a worker's aadhar number a worker's aadhar number will be seeded with a worker's job card job card so basically guys a job card uh, for example i want to work under mg narega so i need to make my job card in that job card my details my address how many days i have worked on what project i have done all these particular things will be written so job card is your identity for mg narega it is a kind of an id card that you are working under mg narega so your job card it has to be seeded with your aadhar number and it is provided that 
information which is there at Aadhaar number and information that is there at job card should match 100%. For example, I need, uh, for example, let's say a person writes his name as Mohan. Mohan. Okay, so this could be one spelling of Mohan. Or let's say this could be one spelling of Mohan. Okay, let's say these are the two variants of the spelling of Mohan. So, spelling of name that is written in your job card and spelling of name that is written in your Aadhaar card should match. Date of birth written here and date of birth written here should match. Address written here and address written here should match. If there is any one mistake, your Aadhaar and your job card will not be seeded. If this is successful, then second step. Second step is that your Aadhaar and your bank account should be linked. Your Aadhaar, your bank account should be linked and details should match here also. Now point is that if there is any mistake, if there is any mistake at any point of a time, what will happen? Your linkage will not happen. Now, government has made this particular thing as, as compulsory. But point is that we find this thing that many number of times so many spelling mistakes are there. Because of this particular thing, large number of people's proposals, they got rejected. And many of the job cards they have got deleted, which is leading to a kind of an injustice. Now, government says this particular thing that we are insisting on this Aadhaar based payment system because by that we can pay money in less time duplicate now see every person's identity is linked with the Aadhaar card often there are a lot of frauds that happened in Aadhaar card for example a person influential person got 10 job cards in his name not working even a single day but is getting the money but now if everybody's Aadhaar card has to be linked duplicate job cards will be lost most beneficiaries that are taking benefit would be lost and it will lead to a lot of saving for the government of India so therefore government is insisting in this particular thing but there is also one more element that opens up. Guys, the ideas which are often smart might not be leading to social justice. Case here. It has been provided that up till now, government has not provided any information. Any information that how much money would be saved. They have not backed it with any particular data. No credible evidence has been provided that how this particular decision is going to help. Also guys, government says this that it will take less time to pay the money. But most of the times, delays that have happened, they have happened because the funding is not there with the government to give the wages. So timely funding, if it would have been given, it would have largely solved all the problems. And this thing should have brought in more gradual manner. Though five extensions were given earlier, but still large number of people are suffering because of it, because of these small spelling mistakes and all such kind of things. So that is guys all about this article. And now moving to next article. The year commences but with deep foreboding. Now this article, it is we are going to see it with respect to GS2 and GS3. It is a general article giving you an overview about the developments that are going for India on internal as well as external level. Now, article first of all say that when we talk about the global level, on global level there are certain concerns. First concern that is there on global level is war that is going on in Ukraine. Now, we see this particular thing that three years have happened as the war got conti as the war got started and as of now there is no sign that who is going to win this particular war this war has entered in a state of stalemate there is one very popular saying it is said that russia is too strong uh, russia is uh, it is said that ukraine is too weak to win ukraine is too weak to win and russia is too strong to lose and because of that a stalemate situation has entered where nobody is budging now, if Russia retreats from the war, it will be seen as a victory of NATO. And if Ukraine is retreated from the war, it will be seen as a defeat of the NATO. So, on one hand, NATO's esteem and prestige is there and on the other hand, the Russia's prestige is there. Russia would not be able to challenge the West anymore if it is not able to win against the Ukraine. So, therefore, it war. this war has become more of an ego war. And there is a possibility that now they might resort to more deadlier weapons in their arsenal, including the nuclear weapon. And in fact, Russia in the past has said that if their national interest will be compromised, they will not shy to use nuclear weapons. So, this is some fear that has emerged here. Then after that, we see that there is Israel-Hamas conflict going on. And Israel-Hamas conflict is being said that it might start a prairies of fire. What is a prairie's fire? So, we have seen that in the grasslands of prairie, if a fire starts, it will extend to a very large area. Now, Israel-Hamas war got started. First, Hamas attacked Israel on 7th of October. And then in retaliation, Israel is attacking the Hamas. People in Gaza Strip are dying. 
Because of this particular thing, many unintended consequences have come. For example, what is happening? Iran, they are asking the Houthis in Yemen that they should attack ships in Red Sea. Particularly ships that are going to Israel or coming from Israel should be attacked. So, Yemen had started attacking ships in Red Sea. Also, guys, what has happened as this particular war is going on, Iran-Pakistan war also got started. It is being said by the Iran that Iran works on the directives of, uh, sorry, Iran says Pakistan works on the directive of USA. And Pakistan has given refuge to many of the terrorist organizations that promote secessionism in Iran. So, what happened? Uh, Iran attacked on Pakistan, then Pakistan attacked on Iran. So, this contravention is going on. Then in Indo-Pacific region, we find this particular thing that between China and Taiwan also, the confrontations are about to increase. Now, why? Recently, we have seen this particular thing. In article also, we have seen that recently elections have held in Taiwan. And in this particular elections, we see this particular thing that Lai Ching-te, Lai ching -te has come to the power, who is on a mission on Taiwanization. Taiwanization. Now, let's understand this particular thing first of all. When we talk about the China and Taiwan, there is a very interesting type of a relation. China says that we are mainland China and Taiwan is a part of China only. Taiwan is not a sovereign nation. But Taiwan says that no, we are a sovereign nation. China in 1992 gave the one China principle. And as part of that one China principle, China said that one day we will make Taiwan as a part of our own country. Taiwan is not a sovereign country. However, over the years, Taiwan has developed a feeling that we are an independent sovereign nation. So, every time Taiwan tries to make relation with any other country, China gets irritated with that. China has very clearly said this thing that if any country will make relation with Taiwan, we will not maintain diplomatic relation with that country. And because of that, now only 11 countries have diplomatic relation with the Taiwan. Okay. Now, in Taiwan as Taiwanization, belongingness with Taiwan and not for China as it is going on, it frustrates China. And with this new elections, it is being said that further Taiwanization will be incorporated in the Taiwan. Now, China might get irritated and it might provoke China to carry some confrontation with the Taiwan. Also, India also has certain problems, external problems, internal problems. Now, China challenge is an external problem which has emerged post 2020. Then internally, we have left wing extremism, that is a challenge. We have the challenge of Manipur going on. Recently, Ulfa has surrendered, but still certain violent factions of Ulfa, with that we have challenge. But most importantly, external challenges, as we talk about the neighborhood of India, is right now there is a lot of crisis that is going on. For example, we find this particular thing, that Maldives. Recently, relations with the Maldives have declined considerably. Particularly, once new president in Maldives, that is Mr. Muizu, has come to power. Now, Mr. Muizu outrightly follows India out policy and is more pro-China. Mr. Muizu, moment he came to the power, he asked Indian troops to leave. When Indian Prime Minister visited Lakshwadeep, leaders in Maldives, they make derogatory comments on Prime Minister. So, because of that, India-Maldives relation has declined. Now, it has been provided that in this particular matter, India cannot go for wolf warrior diplomacy. Now, what is wolf warrior diplomacy? It has been used by China in the past, where China shows very much aggression in the foreign policy. So, India cannot follow that wolf warrior diplomacy with the trust we have to win Maldives. Also, in Bhutan also, we need to be very careful. Now, what has happened, guys? Recently, recently, India and China, they have signed an agreement in which they are going to demarcate their boundary. Also, special memorandum of understanding have been signed between India and Bang uh, Bhutan where they are going to further promote their bilateral relations. Now, in past, we have seen that China deliberately wants to influence Bhutan so that China gets a stronghold in the Bhutan and by that, it can, it can um, get some advantage in the chicken neck area. Okay, so we need to be very careful here. The next challenge that comes here is that election year. Now we see this particular thing that as election year is going to come, there is certain aspects that communalism might get unfolded, fringe elements might to promote a communalistic feelings here. So India need to pay attention to this particular thing. Also guys, it has also been provided that parliament's functioning is also concerning and there is a word that is used that is a democratic decline or a democratic backsliding. 
For example, we have seen that in recent winter session, there were that few people who entered parliament without permission. Then as opposition questioned the government, there were around 140 plus MPs that got suspended, which is said that is democratic black backsliding. So these are the challenges and concerns for India in the short term, which India should try to overcome. So this is guys all about it. Beyond this, nothing much is provided in this particular article. Now, moving on to next article. What are RBI's guidelines on state guarantee? What are RBI's guidelines on state guarantee? Now, this particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 3, public finance. GS paper number 3, public finance. So recently, RBI, recently, RBI's working group, RBI's working group had made certain recommendations with respect to state guarantees. And let's see this particular development. So basically, first of all, what is a guarantee? Now let's understand this with the help of an example. This is A who needs loan. Who needs loan. This is B who is lender, who is willing to give the money. Now, this is C. This is T. Organization willing to give guarantee. Organization willing to give guarantee. Now, let's say A needs a loan. B is ready to give money. But B says that we don't trust you. What if you did not give us the money? Where we should go? So B wants a guarantor of this particular loan. Now, the person who is becoming the guarantee or the person who is giving the guarantee should also have some reputation, should also have some credit worthiness and standing in the market. So basically, guys, what happened, A might approach to the C that, okay, C, you become my guarantor. C will ask that, okay, what is to become a, what does it mean to be a guarantor? It will say that, okay, you just say to B that if A did not give the money, I did not give the money, you will give money on my behalf. Now C will say that, okay, why, but I will get and why I should do this. So A will say that, I am your friend, you should do this for me. Moreover, I will also give you some peace. I will give you some money. A will tell that, okay, okay I have good intentions. I am ready to give the money. I will give the money anyhow. But you please right now become my guarantor and I will give you some peace in the return. Peace in the return. Now understand this particular thing. What is a guarantee in more formal terms? You can read here. A guarantee is a contingent liability of a state that protects the lender or investor from the risk of borrowing, borrower defaulting. Okay. So, the entity to whom the guarantee is given is called as the creditor. The defaulting entity, the entity on whose behalf guarantee is being given, they are called as a principal debtor. And the entity giving the guarantee, they are called, uh, the entity giving the guarantee are called as the surety, are the surety. Now you see this particular thing guys, you see this particular thing that there are so much of the organizations in a state, for example, there are state owned cooperatives, PSUs are there, public sector units are there, there are cooperative banks that are there, urban local bodies are there, they all need money. For example, there is an urban local body, they need money to develop a parking space. They wanted money to build a parking space. They will go to a lender or an institution that give me 100 crore rupees, we want to build a parking. Now this lender will ask the urban local body that okay, if we give you 100 crore rupees, what is the guarantee you will return back? So urban local body can approach the state government saying that please state government be become our guarantor that if this urban local body will not give money, I will give you the money. So what will happen? You will be, you will be here in this particular case. You will be in this particular case is a, here you see. Fine, ULB will become principal debtor, okay, then creditor, fine, the creditor, that institution that is giving the money is creditor, ULB is the debtor and the state government is the surety. Now, RBA working group has provided this particular thing that these guarantees, they are good and they help an institution to raise money in the times of need. But actually, if these guarantees, fine, if let's say the ULB did not give the money, then the state government has to give the money. And it might increase the financial burden, fiscal burden on the state government. 
सो आर बी एज वर्किंग ग्रुप इट नोट दैट द गारंटीज में लीड टू सिग्निफिकेंट फिजिकल रिस्क एंड बर्डन टू द स्टेट इन द टाइम्स अ क्राइसिस कम्स इन द टाइम्स अ बॉडी हुज एक्चुअली टेकन द मनी डज नॉट गिवस द मनी सो देर फॉर वट हैपन हेयर सर्टेन रूल्स एंड सर्टेन डायरेक्शन हैव बीन गिवन Now my point is that guys, you are not really required to go in these particular directives because they are technical in nature, which are not needed for our UPSC CSC examination. I will give you certain idea also. But for prelims examination or mains examination, this question of state guarantee might come. So now the Reserve Bank of India provide this particular thing that when a state government is giving a guarantee, guarantee should only be given for the principal amount and for the normal interest component. If they have taken loan, let's say at a very high five interest rate, fifteen twenty percent. For that, you cannot give the guarantee. You can only give the guarantee for a normal interest rate and for a nor for a for the principal money. They must not be extended for external commercial borrowings. So external commercial borrowings is externally from some bank at commercial interest rate. If you are borrowing the money, if suppose I am borrowing the money from a bank in America, I am borrowing money from the bank in UK. For such purposes, for external commercial borrowings, guarantee cannot be given. And guarantee should not be given for the eighty percent of the project loan. Suppose ULB needs hundred crore rupee for building the parking, and they want hundred crore rupee loan. We can give up to eighty percent, eighty crore rupee on money. We can give the guarantee. So these are certain rules that have been suggested. I will not advise you to go too much in these particular rules because they are technical in nature, which is not needed for UPSC CSC examination. So that is all, guys, about it. And now moving to the next article. Okay, so this particular article we are going to see with respect to the prelims examination. So, what happened recently? Singchong Bugun Village Community Reserve was in news. Why it was in news, or in why it is important for prelims examination? Because recently, guy, a Republic Day parade happened, and in the Republic Day parade, tableaus, fine, jhakis, tableaus that are presented by the state government. State government depict different different aspects of their culture, geography, etc. and arunachal pradesh tableau that was shown arunachal pradesh has depicted singchong bugun village community reserve singchong bigun community village community reserve so therefore it is important now what is this community reserve reserve so it is a biodiversity hotspot it is a very small biodiversity hot hotspot just 17 square kilometer of biodiversity hotspot and where it is located it is located in arunachal pradesh now If we just see little bit of location here, fine. So here we have Singchung Big Bugun Village Community Reserve. Here we have Sasu Orchid Sanctuary, and here we have the Eagle Nest Wildlife Sanctuary. Eagle Nest Wildlife Sanctuary, and here we have the Singchung Bugun Community Reserve. Now, this particular community reserve is important. Why? Because in this particular community reserve, one very important bird lives. That is, bugun, bugun leo chichla, bugun leo chichla. Okay. Now this bugun leo chichla, this particular species, it is critically endangered. It is critically endangered, and its name, that is the bugun leo chichla, it comes from, it comes from the bugun community that lives in this particular region. And this particular species of bird was the first bird species that was identified after independence. That is, nineteen forty seven. so it is india's first bird bird species that was discovered after 1947 and therefore it is very much important now this particular species it lives on only the bugun community lands the community lands of the bugun people so therefore specifically it is found here in this particular biodiversity hotspot that is that is the chingchong bugun village community reserve so therefore it was depicted now when we talk about bugun bugun are indigenous people of arunachal pradesh Fine, and right now their population is just twelve thousand, and approximately over the twelve villages they live. Okay, outside the forest of the Eagle Nest Wildlife Sanctuary, I have just shown you. Now also, guys, when we talk about this Singchung Bugun, it is a village community reserve. So basically, guys, there are two categories. That is the conservation reserve and community reserve. Now, national park, wildlife sanctuary, they have the highest level of protection. But outside the national park, outside the wildlife sanctuary, there are the areas which have less degree of protection, and there we have conservation reserve and community reserve. So what they do? They act as a buffer zone. They act as a buffer zone, connectors, migration corridor. One species of animal wants to go to another species of animal. In between, these are buffer zones which are marginally protected. 
Now, when we talk about conservation reserve, conservation reserve is inhabited completely owned by government. Okay, if the land is completely owned by government, it is inhabited. Government can declare it as a as a conservation reserve. But if land is partly owned by a private sector, then what can be done? It can be declared as it can be declared as the community reserve. So community reserve might have land of public. Conservation reserve will have only the land of the government, and their provisions of the Wildlife Protection Act will apply. Protection of Wildlife Protection Wildlife Protection Act provision will apply. Degree of protection will be given, but it is not that much as given in the case of national park. So this is about it. Then next, there was the tassar silk. Tassar silk that was in news. Why tassar silk was in news? Because again, tassar silk was showcased on tableau of Jharkhand. What is this tassar silk? So basically, guys, when we talk about tassar silk, it is a special variety of silk that is produced by the silk worms. And these silk worms specifically live on Asan and Arjun tree. Asan and Arjun tree. And globally, China, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, these are the countries which produce tassar silk. When we talk about India, India is the second largest producer of the tassar silk. And within India, largest producer of tassar silk is Jharkhand. It is Jharkhand. Okay. It is also called as a tropical tassar. And why tassar silk is also often in the news? Because it is a very important source of livelihood for the tribal women particularly. Because majority of the tassar in India, that is in Jharkhand, it is harvested by the tribal women. So therefore, it is very important for their economic upliftment. Now, Apart from Jharkhand, which are the major states that pro pro produce tassar silk? So, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, they are the major producer and Chhattisgarh is the, sorry, sorry, my apologies, Jharkhand is the major producer. Now, when we talk about this particular silk, it has a unique texture and color. Particularly when you talk about its color, its color is golden or orange yellowish, golden or orange yellowish is its color. And this particular silk, it is far more durable. Its texture is not that much refined when compared with the other varieties of skill, silk. Its texture, its texture is little bit, it's little bit less smooth. And its unique color, it comes because of the presence of the cartenoids. Presence of the cartenoids in silk. Okay. And this particular silk, also it does not retain the moisture. And therefore, in the months of summer, it is an excellent material to be worn. Fine. So, tassar silk. Which state? Jharkhand. Jharkhand is a major producer. Then next article that we have for prelims examination is PM Yashashvi. PM Yashashvi. Now recently PM Yashashvi was in news and I have taken this article from the Hindustan Times. So PM Yashashvi, it has distributed this much money under the scheme. This money is not important but the scheme is important. So what is PM Yashashvi? Because in the past, what they have done, they have given the name of a scheme that, for example, Garima Abhyan is in use. It is for which sector? The question has been asked. So, in the same way, PM Yashashvi, it stands for it stands for PM Prime Minister Young Achievers Scholarship Award Scheme. PM Young Achievers Scholarship Award Scheme. So, it is available for the students, particularly the school students and under the scheme scholarship will be provided. Now, this particular scholarship is specifically applicable to the socially deprived sections. It is available for OBCs, economically backward classes, denotified tribes. Under this particular scheme, students can avail pre-metric scholarship that is for 9th and 10th and post-metric scholarship that is 11th and 12th classes. Fine. And this particular scholarship can be given for the even for the higher education. Fine. Higher education. Now, this particular scholarship can be used to pay the fees for the top tier schools, including the English medium schools. For the hostel fees, this particular money can be availed. And which is the implementing agency for this particular scheme? It is the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. And also, money that will be given under the PM PMHSV will be given by the state government. Okay, so that is about PM Yashashvi. The news was that uh, scheme was in news. However, beyond this, you are not required to go. Okay, that is about it. Then, Armado was in news. Now, 
what is armado and why it is in use so basically armado is a armor vehicle that was showcased in republic day recently armado is a armed vehicle that was showcased on republic day now this particular armado armado it is armed armored light specialist vehicle it is armored light specialist vehicle and this particular vehicle this particular vehicle has been designed by mahindra defense system mahindra defense system now often defense forces they are going for insurgency operations they are going and fighting with the terrorists so they need these specialized vehicles so these vehicles can be used in counter terrorist operations can be used in the special forces operation and also can be used by the quick reaction team quick reaction team is specifically used during the times of the riots or some social communal tension that happens so there these particular vehicles can be used now when we talk about these particular vehicles these particular vehicles gets protection from they gets ballistic protection in incoming uh, uh, incoming ammunition fine incoming bullets etc they are protected from that okay also it gets special protection such as protection from ballistics and explosives it gets a self cleaning exhaust okay air filtration system fine self cleaning air filtration system so that they can work in the muddy and dirty terrains such as deserts so this is about the armado so moving on and guys these articles are specifically important for prelims examination because in the past question on such kind of a lines have been asked now moving on and let's take the mapping entry for today so today we are going to take mapping for uganda today we are going to cover uganda in mapping first of all why we are going to take uganda in today's mapping it is because recently nam summit was held in uganda so what happened recently in the capital city of uganda that is kampala 19th non aligned movement summit was held in this particular summit india has also participated when we talk about the nam non aligned movement it was founded in 1960 and india was one of the founding member of the nam nam was founded to present a third front during the cold war so you might already be knowing cold war world got divided in two parts one was the capitalist camp of usa other was the socialist camp of ussr and because these two camps were developed there was a possibility that a war a third world war could could got started now newly developing developing countries such as india they created a third front and this third front was called as nam they wanted autonomy in their foreign policy and they said that we are not going to support any front and today even this nam is going on also guys if you might have heard india today uses strategic autonomy in their foreign policy this strategic autonomy is again a philosophy which can be said as nam in the new bottle in nam we did not have any permanent friends or enemy in right now strategic autonomy also we don't have any permanent friend or enemy we are going to adopt the transactional approach so even today nam is alive okay in spirit in india's foreign policy and recently this 19th nam summit was held in uganda okay now when we talk about uganda guys uganda is a land locked nation in central and eastern africa now first of all as we talk about eastern africa so basically what are the major countries that we have in eastern africa so guys here we have eritrea here we have djibouti somalia ethiopia fine here we have Kenya here we have Uganda Tanzania Mozambique Malawi here we have Madagascar so this is the these are the important countries on the east in the east africa and uganda it comes at east africa sometimes it is also counted as a central african country now when we talk about uganda let's see major neighbors of the uganda so we are going to start from 12 o'clock so here we have south sudan here we have south sudan then we have kenya we have kenya south sudan kenya then after that we have tanzania we have tanzania then here we have rwanda here we have rwanda then here we have okay uh, yes here we have rwanda then here we have the democratic republic of congo okay democratic republic of congo okay so these are the countries which makes border with the uganda again we will see it fine so we have south sudan here then we have kenya here then we have tanzania here okay then we have rwanda here 
okay then we have the democratic republic of congo and one very other important feature of uganda is that basically revenzori mountains and lake victoria victoria is a very important feature lake victoria and revenzori mountains are very important feature now when we talk about lake victoria lake victoria so here you can see that we have lake victoria now lake victoria it is shared by three countries and that is uganda fine uganda kenya and tanzania uganda kenya and tanzania the majority of the coastline of victoria lake it is in tanzania but again uganda is a major stakeholder in lake victoria now when we talk about lake victoria uh, already in the last class we have seen the mapping of lake victoria also last to last class lake victoria it is surrounded by three countries and it is the second largest fresh water lake globally second largest fresh water lake globally and it is also the source of the white nile river which joins blue nile river and then it becomes the nile river okay nile nile river and also it supports the fishery it supports the fishery okay so these are all the important aspects with respect to the uganda lake victoria fine and related aspects so guys i hope that you have liked it okay and uh, this is all about this particular session and with this we come to an end to this session in next class we will be meeting and we will take the other aspects so that is all for today if you have liked the video please do hit the like button thank you so much